Uh, gosh, I am in a good mood today. And as I said, in a good mood because I think we have, you know, we've made a significant shift in the mood of the country and away from, I guess, the darkest days of the COVID pandemic and outbreak. We have got rid of masks and the requirement uh, for masks in retail. Um, most of the mandates are going, and I think we've only got another three months of the government uh, potentially having emergency powers to mess with our lives. Also, importantly, uh, border restrictions coming off for people, uh, inbound travellers. Uh, don't have to wear a mask on a plane when you go to the supermarket. Um, and basically all COVID restrictions and the traffic light system is, is gone. I think that is welcome for each and every individual New Zealander. Uh, and also for our small and large businesses. We heard from Greg Harford from uh, Retail New Zealand earlier. But one organisation that I spoke to an awful lot actually in the early days of, of the COVID pandemic and our response to it was Business New Zealand. It's the largest uh, business lobby organisation or association in the country and it represents many, many of the country's biggest businesses. One or their advocacy director is Catherine Beard and uh, she joins us now. Uh, Catherine, lovely to have you with us. Man, I, I don't know about you, it feels like, you know, the switch maybe has been flicked here with yesterday's announcement. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, very, very welcome move and one we've been advocating for for some time. So, yes, I think um, it will be hopefully back, back to normal or a new normal and um, certainly for the retail sector, you know, I think it was really... Um, really inconsistently applied set of rules. You know, it was a bit bizarre that you could go into a crowded uh, restaurant or bar or even sports stadium, but you couldn't go into a retail store without a mask. So, you know, I think when the rules kind of don't, you know, don't really make sense and they're not consistent, then you've got to really look at, you know, why are you doing it? So, yeah, that, it'll be a very good day for retailers. Mm. Uh, Catherine, Overall, and I know we've talked and uh, talked to other people in your association over the last two and a half years, there were major problems, major problems with supply chains and availability of products. And, and of course, we've still got a problem w with staffing, etc. Are those structural global problems for business, like the supply chain, are they starting to come right now? Um, look, there's definitely some green shoots in the supply chain story. Um, you know, the, the experts say that it's probably going to be maybe another 12 months where it's uh, certainly still going to be challenging and, and swings and roundabouts. But I think the what's, what we're starting to see is that consumers globally are dialing back their spending a bit. Mm. Um, I think, we you know, we had the unusual situation of, of um, governments pumping money into economies, people's asset prices going up, people not losing their jobs because of the government support. And, you know, they all jumped online and started a bit of a, a shopping frenzy. And it was... So that didn't, didn't help the supply chains because it was sort of like Christmas that never stopped. But I think that that's starting to stop now. Yeah. OK, so it's back to fundamentals and basics. Catherine... Uh, and I know this is hard to quantify. What was the cost to New Zealand business of COVID and couldn't it have been better or worse than it was? Yeah, it, it is hard to quantify. I think there will definitely be economists out there that did the modelling. I know I was involved in a group early on where they uh, did try to work out what it was going to cost on a daily basis to be at level four. So those numbers exist and they're pretty big. Um, and, I, and I think the cost really is in the, in the extra debt that we've taken on as a country through, you know, printing money essentially that we have to pay back. And, of course, that's feeding into inflation. So, you know, I think from our point of view, I think it would be great if there was an independent review of how COVID was handled. I think we've got to learn the lessons uh, for the future because there probably will be more of these situations. And, w you know, we must be able to do a better job in our view. Mm. Um, so, yeah. But it wasn't completely useless, our response, was it? And I think back, particularly, Catherine, to the earliest days, we seem to have some more unity of purpose and some acceptance of some of the quite draconian measures that 
individuals and businesses put up with. And I guess in some ways I look back and reflect and say, wasn't it nice when we were all kind of pulling together? But that evaporated after a while, didn't it? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. I think there was a lot of solidarity right through New Zealand at the start. I mean, none of us had experienced a global pandemic before. We didn't know how bad it was going to get. We didn't have a cure, you know, we didn't have vaccines. I think they took about a year and a half to, to hit the hit the street. So, yeah, it was quite a sort of scary time. And, you know, being an island in the middle of nowhere, it felt like for once in our life we had a a natural motion, a competitive advantage. So, yeah, it was definitely definitely a time of solidarity. But I think, you know, and, and it's easy to sort of critique in hindsight, isn't it? Um, and so I don't want to be overly critical. Mm. But, you know, if we, can, if we can learn the lessons for the next time, that would be, mm. I think that would be sensible. Catherine, I also have to say, looking from the outside, it seemed to me there reached a point where there was frustration not just from Business New Zealand and your members, from all sorts of outside agencies who felt that at some stage the government turned its ears off and was not listening and became captured by its in-house or its expert advisers and would not brook any interference in the control it was exercising over the country. Yeah, and look, I, I think there's a little bit of a tendency uh, to, to, for this government particularly to go for sort of uh, centralised approaches to things. And, and I think, you know, what we were sort of trying to convey was, look, actually, you've got to trust the business community. You know, they're highly incentivised to keep their people safe because they want to keep operating yeah. because, you know, their business depends on it. So, and, you know, we are good at, at doing things like getting PPE gear in, like, you know, we could we got the masks in uh, quickly, you know, we could, you know, business people have networks. Yeah. Uh, we've got big multinationals in our membership and it felt like we were just having to sit in the sidelines a bit. So I think that could be done better in future. Uh, in fact, someone said to me, maybe someone from in your organisation, if it's not the government's idea, they don't want to know. Yeah, and look, I, I think it's, um, it's just devolving responsibility, even if it comes to, look, you know, how, how do you roll out the vaccines, uh, you know, use the pharmacies, use, uh, we had a lot of big businesses that could vaccinate their workforces, they do it with the flu, you know, don't, you don't all have to go to a, a tiny suite of options, so, and you know, with um, Māori healthcare as well, you know, use the people in the community that um, know who they're trying to vaccinate and who trust them, just roll it out. So I think, yeah, trying to kind of hold on to things um, centrally probably is not the most efficient way to do it. All right, for you personally, what's the nicest thing about yesterday's announcement and the lifting of these restrictions? Oh, look, uh, just not having to, to wear a mask is going to be uh, fantastic. And, and I think also that hopefully... New Zealand's sending a better signal even for tourism that it's open for business and it's not going to be such a hassle to get here and, you know, you're not going to have to jump through too many hoops. Yeah. Uh, well, Catherine, I have to say, your organisation, I think, did sterling work throughout, um, well, what's the crisis period of, uh, the crisis period of uh, COVID-19? I thank you very much indeed for joining us and for your time this morning. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, Catherine Beard there, the Director of Advocacy for Business New Zealand. Oh, I don't know if anyone will write a book about COVID-19. Um, I think there's a huge inclination when you've been through something like this to put it behind you and forget about it, to not talk about the war, as it were, and to get on or get life uh, back to normal. Um, and I guess that's how I'm feeling right now. But, boy, boy, we've been through some stuff, haven't we?